Welcome to Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Let's talk about the affidavit. We covered it in the live, but I want to cover it with you now. It's pretty intense and graphic, so trigger warning for sure on this. It gives us a lot of insight into the story of what happened to the children. So this affidavit was unsealed and posted on June 19th, 2020. Welcome to Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Please like, please subscribe, please ring the bell for notifications. I go live every Saturday morning and I also go live periodically. So thank you for being here and welcome to Left Undone. part of who the officer is that's put who the officer is that's putting this together and then it goes into the actual complaint and information and the justification of the why they search the property he's basically a, you know i currently hold an advanced certificate and a management certificate from the idaho peace officers standards and training academy I have over 2500 hours of training i've attended multiple trainings and classes throughout my career including graduation from the fbi national academy in 2015 and i've received multiple hours of specialized training in investigations i have also conducted numerous investigations and interviews with suspects victims and witnesses involving narcotics sex crimes and fraud I also received numerous hours of training on traffic stops and detection of criminal behavior. I respectfully ask the court to take notice of the PC affidavit in Madison County case number CR33-20-0302, a copy which has been attached. Since November 26, 2019, the Rexburg Police Department has been involved in the search for J.J. Vallow, date of birth 5-25-2012, and Tylee Ryan, date of birth 9-24-2002. The minor children's mother, Lori Vallow, has been charged with two felony counts of desertion of a minor child, one misdemeanor count of resisting and obstructing, one misdemeanor count of solicitation to commit a crime, and one misdemeanor count of contempt. The contempt charge is for failing to comply with an order of child protection action in Madison County to produce JJ and Tylee to the Rexburg Police or the Department of Health and Welfare. She was required to produce the children by January 30th, 2020. Tylee was 17 at the time she went missing and JJ was seven when he went missing. Chad Daybell was present in Kauai, Hawaii on February 20th when Lori Vallow was arrested on the felony desertion charges. I was present at that arrest. Daybell was also present at the March 6th initial appearance in Madison County, Idaho. As such, I know that Chad Daybell was aware of the felony charges directly related to the location, health, and well-being of the minor children named above. Since November 26th, the Rexburg Police Department, along with the FBI, have been investigating the location and whereabouts of these two minor children. The last verifiable sighting of Tylee Ryan was on September 8th, 2019, in Yellowstone National Park. The last verifiable sighting of J.J. Ballow was September 22nd, 2019, in his mother's apartment, located at 565 Pioneer Road, Unit 175, Rexburg, Idaho, by Lori's friend, Melanie Gitt. While the Rexburg police and FBI have received many tips of alleged sightings since the beginning of the case, none of these tips have led to any verifiable or actionable information regarding the health, safety, or location of the minor children. Lori Vallow moved to Rexburg on or about September 1st, 2019, with her children, Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow, and her brother, Alex Cox. Lori resided with her children at 565 Pioneer Road, Unit 175 in Rexburg, Idaho. 
Alex Cox resided in the same complex, initially living in the same unit as Lori, and then moving into his own apartment at 565 Pioneer Road, Unit 107 in Rexburg, Idaho. Lori Vallow's close friend, Melanie Gibb, has cooperated with Idaho and Arizona law enforcement regarding the investigation of the children. Melanie Gibb has reported that from September 19, 2019, through the morning of September 23rd, 2019, she visited Lori Vallow at her new residence in Rexburg, Idaho. Gibb reports that when she arrived in Rexburg, Lori Vallow informed her that J.J. Vallow had become a zombie. Gibb further reports that the term zombie refers to an individual whose mortal spirit has left their body and that their body is now the host of another spirit. The new spirit in a zombie is always considered a dark spirit. While the dark spirit inhabits the host body, the person's true spirit goes into limbo and is stuck there until the host body is physically killed. As such, death of the physical body is seen as a mechanism by which the body's original spirit can be released from limbo. I still, I still, every time I read this stuff, I think, is this science fiction? Like, really? This is a bad book. This belief was told to Gibb by Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow had learned it from Chad Daybell and immediately told Gibb. Gibb was present with Lori Vallow when Chad Daybell first taught Lori this information over the phone in 2019 in reference to Charles Vallow. So there you go back to those red flags way back. Melanie Gibb has further informed me that Lori Vallow called Tylee a zombie in the spring of 2019. Gibb was on the phone with Lori and heard Lori call Tylee a zombie, to which Tylee responded, not me, mom. This arose out of Lori requiring Tylee to babysit JJ, and Tylee did not want to. If you don't babysit your brother, you become a zombie. Anybody who doesn't do what Lori wants becomes a zombie. Lori Vallow told Melanie Gibb that Tylee had also turned into a zombie into a zombie when she was 12 or 13, which was approximately the same time Tylee had become difficult to deal with. 12 or 13 people. When do girls get their periods? What's hormonal mean? Teenagers? I know girls are different than boys to raise, but she's already raised a teenager. Colby. So how could she not? Oh, it just makes no sense, right? It makes no sense. It makes just like makes. Melanie, I'm trying to make sense out of something that doesn't make sense. Melanie Gibb has further informed me that she was told by Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow that they held the religious belief that they are part of the Church of the Firstborn, and their mission in that church was to lead the 144,000 mentioned in the book of Revelation. They also stated their mission was to rid the world of its zombies. There is a video on the Church of the Firstborn. I found a cult, a woman that had gotten out of that cult that her parents were in it years ago. And I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it was called Church of the Firstborn and it was a dangerous cult. On January 26, 2020, a search warrant was served on Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow in Kauai, where they were living and on their vehicle. The children were not found with Chad and Lori in Hawaii and no evidence was found to suggest that they were living with Chad and Lori. where Chad and Lori Daybell were served with two search warrants just hours ago. Law enforcement officers from Eastern Idaho, along with federal agents and the Kauai Police Department, pulled Lori and Chad over. They were driving a black SUV. They pulled into this resort where I am standing. They put Chad into one vehicle, Lori into another. That's when their vehicle was seized and they had no way to get home. We had a chance to ask them so many questions that need answers. Lori Nate Eaton with East Idaho News. Can you tell me where your kids are? Where are your kids? No comment. No comment? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Where are your children? Yeah, why don't you just give us a comment? Just tell us where they are. Chad, where are Lori's kids? What happened to Tammy, Chad? Can you tell us what happened to Tammy? Why have you guys been in Hawaii for so long? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great.
that's great that they're praying for you, praying for your kids, what? You have nothing to say? Did you do something to your children? Are your children still alive? That's a simple question. I've got three kids of my own. I can tell you every minute where my kids are at. Where are your children? What do you guys plan to do now? Are you going to, you have five days to get your children in front of a judge in Rexburg, then what? Are you guys innocent of any crimes? Have you committed any crimes? Chad, you guys have a lot to say on your podcast. You don't have anything to say now? Lori? Do you believe that you were instructed by God or others to do something for your children? If you could give a message to them, what would you say? Listen, if you just talk to us, we'll leave you alone. Tammy's worried. Tammy's family's very worried. Tammy's family's very worried. Lori, uh, your, your mother, Kay, came out. Kay and Larry, they're offering a $20,000 reward for your children. And you're over here on the beach. This is your chance to tell your story. Nothing you want to say? One last chance right here? Anything you want to say to the people in Idaho? Laura, you have a lot of cash there in your in your baggie. Were you guys planning to leave Hawaii? Were you planning to take off? And with that, Chad and Lori darted into this resort, and they still have not come out. Now, police have not said what they are searching for in that SUV or in their home. But one thing that was not found is Lori's children. JJ and Tylee are still missing. Tomorrow, we will have much more from Hawaii. For now, I'm Nate Eaton reporting for EastIdahoNews.com. Through this investigation, we have discovered that J.J. Vallow was registered at Kennedy Elementary School in Rexburg the first week of September 2019. Kennedy School was informed that J.J. had an IEP, Individual Education Plan, due to his autism. Kennedy Elementary was in the process of creating a new IEP for J.J. On September 23, 2019, J.J. had an unexcused absence. On September 24, 2020, Lori called Vicki Barton of the Madison School District and informed her that JJ was going to Louisiana with his grandparents and wouldn't be home until the end of October, maybe later. On October 29th, Madison School District was informed that JJ will be homeschooled. During searches of Lori's apartment in Rexburg and subsequent searches of her apartment in Kauai, no evidence of homeschooling material was ever found. No other school district has ever requested JJ's records from Madison School District. As mentioned in the last verifiable sighting of Tylee Ryan was in Yellowstone National Park on September 8th, 2019. Photographs established she was there with her mother, Larry Vallow, her brother, JJ Vallow, and her uncle, Alex Cox. They drove there in Alex Silver F Ford 150. This trip was further established by tracking the GPS cell tower connections and Google account information on Alex Cox's phone. Oh, Alex, like I said this morning, Alex, oh my God, he's such a dumbass. He took his phone with him when we were murdering people. I'm Lori and I know everything and I have plans. I am the planner, I'm the gatherer, I'm the planner, and my brother's a dumbass. So he's next. The cellular analyst survey team here and after called CAST, C-A-S-T, is an FBI unit that provides analysis of cell phone records and presents the information to law enforcement. CAST has analyzed Alex Cox's phone and provided the location information mentioned in paragraph 13. The CAST analyst provides the location of Cox's phone due to my training and experience and common knowledge, I am aware that most individuals now keep their cell phones with them at all times. And the locations of an individual's phone can be used to establish the location of the owner of the phone. CAST uses cellular devices, GPS data points, cell tower connections, Wi-Fi connections, and Google tracking information to establish the location of a cell phone. The GPS data points used by CAST are considered to be 
highly accurate, and can place the devices within a six meter radius. Within six meters, which is less than three feet. It's about 19, a little more than 19 inches is six meters. So these analysis can literally know where I am in this room within night, what, this far from here to there. It knows I'm like, that's crazy, but that is what, that's amazing when you think about it. That's amazing. So within 19 inches, they were able to pinpoint where Alex was. CAST has further informed law enforcement that Cox's phone exited the west entrance of Yellowstone National Park at 1840. 1840 is 640 p.m. His phone appeared to be at Buckaroo's Barbecue Grill in West Yellowstone, Montana from 1845 to 1902. So is there like 17 minutes, 1845, 645 to 702. Cox then returns to Rexburg at approximately 2037, 837 p.m. The phone is then at Lori's apartment number 175 until 2135, 935, at which time Cox appeared to go to the Maverick on Main Street in Rexburg at 2143. The Maverick in Rexburg, 2143, 943 p.m. until 2153. It was there for 10 minutes. Cox then went back to Lori's apartment from 2244 to 2315. At 2344, so 1144 p.m., Cox is located at his residence in apartment 107. On Monday, September 9th, from midnight, from midnight and 044 a.m., so 12.45 a.m., 12.44 a.m. in the morning, Cox's phone was located as apartment 107. Apartment 107. However, at 2.42 a.m. to 3.37 a.m., Cox is located again at Lori's apartment, 175, where Lori lived with Tylee and JJ. Middle of the night. This is significant, not only because he's there in the middle of the night, but also because this is the only time in September he appears to go over to Lori between midnight and 6 a.m. At 4.37 a.m., Alex went back to his own apartment, Unit 107, until 8.59 a.m., so right before 9 o'clock. At 9.21, he was located at a property with the address of 202 North 1900 East Rexburg, which is the residence of Chad Daybell. It should be noted that while Chad Daybell's address is listed as Rexford, it is actually located in Fremont County, Idaho. The 921 AM reading is a GPS data point and places them behind the home on Daybell's property near the east end of the barn. Now remember, within 19 inches for us in the United States. You guys in other countries understand the six meter thing. Alex Cox's phone was still at the Daybell's residence at 10.39 a.m. At 10.47 a.m., his phone shows a hit at the city of St. Anthony. At this time, we are unable to tell if he was actually inside the city limits of St. Anthony. St. Anthony is about a five-minute drive from the Daybell residence, or if this was a cell tower ping on his phone while he was still at the Daybell residence. At 10.57 a.m. to 11.39, Cox is located at the Daybell property. At 11.52 a.m. to noon, 12.02 p.m., he was at Del Taco in Rexburg. He appears to spend most of the rest of the day in his apartment. Through this investigation, the Rexburg Police Department and FBI have seized, searched, and analyzed multiple cellular devices pursuant to several warrants. On June 1st, 2020, so 20 days ago, I was informed by Special Agent Ricky Wright of the FBI that the FBI has been examining a phone believed to be owned by Tamara, Tammy Daybell. Tammy was Chad's wife and died on October 19th, 2019. The FBI found a text conversation between Tammy and her husband, Chad Daybell, on September 9th which is the day after the last known sighting of Tylee Ryan at Yellowstone National Park. 
The text conversation reads as follows. Chad to Tammy at 11.53 a.m. Well, I've had an interesting morning. I felt I should burn all the limb debris by the fire pit before it got too soaked by the coming storms. While I did so, I spotted a big raccoon along the fence. I hurried and got my gun, and he was still walking along. I got close enough that one shot did the trick. He is now in our pet cemetery. Fun times. Sick bastard. Chad to Tammy at 11.56. Gonna shower now and then go right for a while at BYU. Love you. Then Tammy to Chad at 2.47 p.m. Good for you. And then Chad to Tammy at 2.48 p.m. Chad to Tammy at 2.48 p.m. I'm back home now. I found the text suspicious because raccoons are normally nocturnal animals and are not regularly out during the day. It should be noted that from interviewing neighbors of Chad Daybell, we are aware that in mid-July 2019, Garth Daybell, Chad's son, told their neighbors that Chad had shot a raccoon out of a tree on the property that day. Those neighbors are named Matt and Regan Price. Garth told Matt Price about the raccoon in a response to a question from Matt about hearing a gunshot. The Prices informed me that the fire pit in the back of the Daybell property was hardly ever used until the last few months. Regan informed me that there appeared to be frequent bonfires in the pit on the Daybell property over the last few months, and the first one she noticed was soon after Tammy's death on October 19, 2019. On June 2nd, 2020, Detective Bruce Mattenly of the Fremont County Sheriff Office contacted Samantha Williams, who is the sister of Tammy Daybell. He asked her if she was aware of a pet cemetery on Chad and Tammy Daybell's property in Idaho. She informed him that she was aware of the pet cemetery and stated that both she and Tammy were pet people and they both had pet cemeteries. When asked the location of the pet cemetery on the Daybell property, she stated that it was east of the Red Barn near the fire pit. On June 4th, 2020, I spoke with Samantha and she informed me that she was aware of the location of the pet cemetery on the Daybell property because Tammy had shown it to her. Samantha was then shown an aerial photograph of the Daybell property and she pointed to the same area near the fire pit where Alex's phone pinged on September 9, 2019. The bug facts establish that Alex Cox appeared to be at the Daybell property on September 9, 2019 until at least 11.39 a.m. Chad sent the text to Tammy about burning debris and shooting and burying the raccoon in the pet cemetery only 14 minutes later at 11.53. The pet cemetery referenced by Chad Daybell is located at the same location as most of the pings on Alex's phone on September 9th, 2019. On June 3rd, 2020, I interviewed Melanie Gibb and her boyfriend, David Warwick, in Pleasant Grove, Utah. We discussed in depth the weekend of September 22nd and 23rd, 2019, due to the fact that both Gibb and Warwick stayed at Lori Vallow's residence in Rexburg that weekend. Gibb informed me, consistent with information she had previously given to law enforcement, that she arrived in Rexburg on September 19th, 2019. Soon after she arrived, Lori and Vallow informed Gibb that JJ had become a zombie and pointed out behaviors such as sitting still and watching TV, such as sitting still and watching TV, claiming JJ said he loves Satan and increased vocabulary as evidence that JJ was now a, that JJ was now a zombie. Gibb observed JJ's behavior and felt it to be the same as she had always observed it to be. The last time Gibb and Warwick verifiably saw JJ was the night of September 22nd, 2019. Warwick informed us that it was late and that Gibb, Vallow and Warwick were going to do a podcast. Warwick said that JJ was acting up. Alex Cox took JJ to his apartment in the complex. When Alex returned later that night, he was carrying JJ, who appeared to be asleep with his head on Alex's shoulder. 
Warwick specifically remembered this because he saw it as a tender moment. People that know David have said that now he believes that JJ maybe was dead at that moment. Warwick further informed us that when he woke up the morning of September 23rd, 2019, he asked Lori where JJ was. This was between 8 and 9 a.m. Lori informed Warwick and Gibb that JJ had been acting like a zombie and had been crawling on the kitchen cabinetry and had gotten up on top of the cabinetry in the space between cabinetry and the ceiling. She informed Warwick and Gibb that when JJ had climbed up the cabinetry, that he had knocked a picture of Jesus off the refrigerator. Vallow then informed Warwick and Gibb that Alex had come and taken JJ. The FBI cast team has analyzed Alex Cox movements the morning of September 23rd, 2019 by his cell phone GPS. At 9.55 a.m., Alex is again on the Daybell property. He was there until 10.12. The pings on his phone locate Alex near the pond on Chad Daybell's property at the northern edge of the property. On June 3rd, 2020, I asked Special Agent Ricky Wright of the FBI to analyze the frequency of Alex Cox visits to Chad Daybell's property during the month of September 2019. His response was, per your request, I checked the visits by Alex to Chad's house again. There were only four visits by Alex during the month of September. These were on 9-6 from 12.41 p.m. to 12.53 p.m., 9-9, 9-23, 9-25 from 10.05 a.m. to 10.22. During the two visits on 9-6 and 9-25, all the pings were in and around the house and there were no pings anywhere in the backyard near the fire pit or pond. And as you can see, these visits were also short, about 11 minutes and 17 minutes, like the one on 923, 17 minutes. The visits on 99 was the only long visit, approximately two and a half hours. On June 9th, a search warrant was executed at Chad Daybell's residence and property with a local FBI ERT team we located at least multiple sites of interest. These were identified and corresponded to the cellular data of Alex Cox's phone when he was on the property, mentioned in paragraph 12 or 16. Additionally, one of the possible sites correlated to a location on the property Chad had texted his wife about, mentioned in 17, paragraph 17 and 18. The first site of interest was located on the north side of the pond near the north edge of the property. This site corresponded with the two GPS pings from Alex Cox's phone on September 23rd, 2019. A patch of ground was located that appeared to be disturbed. The weed growth on top of the disturbed ground was shorter than the surrounding weed growth. What appeared to be sod etching was also noticed. The disturbed area was approximately four feet by two and a half feet. Members of the FBI ERT team removed the top layer of sod Okay, here's where it gets horrible, guys. This is where it gets bad. Underneath the layer of sod were several large flat rocks. The rocks were removed and two pieces of flat paneling were found. The paneling was removed and investigators exposed a round object covered in black plastic. Upon exposing the round object covered in black plastic, a strong odor was noticed. A FBI ERT member used a small sharp instrument and made a small incision in the plastic and a layer of white plastic was observed. An incision was made into the white layer of plastic exposing what appeared to be human remains. The crown of the head covered in light brown hair. The remaining dirt around this object was methodically removed, exposing what appeared to be a body wrapped in black plastic. The plastic appeared to be tightly wrapped around the body and secured with gray duct tape. Cheryl Anderson, associate professor of anthropology at Boise State University was present on scene and advised the remains found near the pond to be human. A second site of interest was located behind the red unattached outbuilding located roughly in the center of the property near a fire pit. 
Next to the fire pit is an area used as a pet cemetery. This site correlated to several GPS pings on Alex Cox's phone on September 9th, 2019. Ground in this area was probed with a steel pole and several areas of disturbed ground were located. During a search in this ground, a buried cat and dog remains were found. A backhoe was used to dig further layers of the dirt. While doing this, bricks were located approximately a foot below the ground. Once the bricks were discovered, the soil was examined and what appeared to be two bones were located. Based on the condition of the bones, Cheryl Anderson was not able to determine whether the bones were human. Methodically, the dirt in this area was searched and several other items of interest were found, including other bones, charred tissue and charred bones. Cheryl Anderson indicated these additional bones, both charred and uncharred and tissue found were human remains. Investigators provided photos of some of the partial remains that were found at the pet cemetery to Sarah Getz, PhD, a forensic anthropologist. Dr. Getz was able to identify those remains as being non-adult human remains. Appearance in court earlier in this eventful day that has rattled multiple tight knit communities in eastern Idaho. New specialist Andrew Adams is live in Rexburg tonight with more. Andrew? Dave, though, his attorneys had asked for something much lower. Chad Daybell's bail was set at a million dollars. He's charged with two felony counts of destruction or concealment of evidence. And people here simply can't believe how this has played out. The dawn gave way to a ghostly scene. Wow. And the grim discovery from the night before uh, unidentified human remains continued to haunt. It's hard to believe. It's, it's really sad. Voices of despair. It is tough. It's really tough. And shock. This is kind of surreal. It's just like, whoa. Hi. Echoed across these acres as federal investigators unearthed evidence in the case of missing children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. Are aware that those remains are the remains of children? By afternoon. Family members had stated those were the remains of J.J. and Tylee, and Chad Daybell yes. had made his first court appearance. So I would ask the court to take note of paragraphs 39 and 40 and the manner of the concealment of, of one of those bodies, which the state finds to be particularly egregious. With Daybell and Lori Vallow both in custody, it didn't take long for the voices to turn to outrage. These children deserved to have been provided for and taken care of and not receive what they did that just people could be involved in things like that i just think it's really heartbreaking for the whole country the questions may still outnumber the answers i have no doubt that what they found was tylee and jj voices in rexburg and beyond it should never happen you know what i mean will continue to plead for justice it's just unthinkable the fact that they confirmed that they were two children's remains that they found just breaks your heart all in all just a sad deal Daybell is due in court next on July 1st. Reaction coming from all corners tonight. Lori Vallow's parents and niece saying in a joint statement that they're struggling to find comfort and hope in this potential new reality. In Rexburg, Idaho, Andrew Adams, KSL 5 News. Andrew, thank you. And as for Lori Vallow, JJ and Tylee's mother, she remains behind bars tonight at a separate location from Daybell. And like her husband, she too has a $1 million bond. Now, she was arrested in Hawaii back in February after a months long investigation into the disappearance of these kids. For a moment, she is charged, for the moment rather, she's charged with two counts of desertion and non support of a dependent child. But more serious charges could be coming. We expect that. And she is expected back in court on. July 9th. Stay with KSL as we follow the investigation. We're still waiting to learn the cause of death for the two children found on Daybell's backyard. Also, we're still waiting on autopsy results in the death of Chad Daybell's first wife, Tammy, who's buried in Springville. While officers were conducting the search, Chad Daybell was observed by officers to be continuously watching where the officers were searching. He was observed watching officers while sitting in his vehicle in his front driveway and while sitting in his vehicle across the street at his daughter's residence. Around the time the head mentioned in paragraph 32 and 33 was discovered, Chad Daybell was observed leaving his daughter's residence in a gray SUV. I and other officers pursued him in police vehicles, conducted a traffic stop, 
and detained him due to the fact that human remains were discovered on his property. This was dated 10th day of June, 2020. Last page, it just says, per the status conference held between the parties on June 19th, 2020, this court hereby orders that the preliminary hearing scheduled to be gone, begin on July 1st, 2020 at 9 a.m. be vacated and continued to August 3rd, 2020 at 10.30 a.m. through August 4th, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. This order is contingent upon a stipulation being filed by June 22nd at 5 p.m. between the parties for a continuance. The stipulation must be filed for this order to go in effect. Now, what is to me, does that mean that there's going to be new charges by Monday, the 22nd? I'm not sure if that means that new charges will be um, coming on Monday, the 22nd by 5 p.m. because it says something about a stipulation by that time. I'm not sure. I did hear that charges are coming, murder charges are coming. I don't know for a fact, but we can all assume that that's what's going to happen. Like, how can we not? So this is horrible. They really and truly did something terrible to these children. Sounds like JJ's body was intact. It sounds like Tylee's was not. I hope they are resting peacefully and I hope they're in heaven. And I hope and pray that justice gets served for these children because this is probably the most horrible horrible outcome I could have imagined happening to these kids. We all hoped and prayed to think a mother, Lori Vatlow, would allow this to happen to her children or to be part of it with knowledge that it happened is disgusting. It's sick. It's unbelievable. And people can blame evil spirits all they want. But I think as humans, we have every ability to refuse any kind of evilness coming into our mind, our soul, ourself. She had complete control to be able to save her children and walk away from her ridiculous belief system. And freaking Chad Daybell the Potato is no prize. I can't even believe that anybody would follow what this man is saying. It doesn't work in my head. It doesn't work. It doesn't. I can't wrap my mind around it at all. There's nothing charismatic about the guy. There's nothing. I mean, I don't even, I can't even, I can't even get it. I can't, I just can't. I don't, I don't, I can't. So I'm going to end now because we went over the affidavit. Thank you so much for watching Left Undone Incomplete Investigations. Please like, please subscribe, please ring the bell for notifications. We go live every Saturday morning. And if you want to become a member, please hit the join button. Thank you so much. Appreciate you all. Stay home for now. I think we're getting a second wave, so be careful. Be careful, please, with the COVID-19. We don't need this to spread and we don't need you to get sick. Take care. Be safe.